Good morning. Very happy to be here today. And by the way, I'm a very happy man. <laughs> Not only because I'm French, uh, uh, you know, French are quite pessimistic, pessimistic, but I have, a, because I have a, a love, uh, I love the job that I have. I really love it. It's the job of my life, the job of my dreams. And it's uh, actually much more than a job. It's kind of, kind of a passion mixing uh, my uh, uh, interest for business and uh, my personal beliefs. So you may know everything about Sodexo, if, uh, even uh, uh, with uh, uh, what Richard just said. But let me uh, give you some very brief information. Sodexo is the world leader of quality of life services. And we employ 430,000 people in 80 countries. And each day, there are 75 million people that use our services. I'm not sharing these figures to impress you, even if it's always good to impress people, but that's not the purpose. It's just to illustrate the fact that we have a very strong business case for diversity and inclusion. Because we employ so many people, and we have so many clients and consumers. So we employ men, we employ women, we employ all uh, origins, we employ different ages, we employ gay and lesbian people, straight people, uh, and this is really diversity. But my job, and it's not, I'm not the only one to have it, is to make sure that we are inclusive for all. And this is very important also for generation. We, you know, we all know that we, uh, we all think that we have the truth because of what we are, what we have experienced. But unfortunately, it's not true. I know it. I have the truth. So I can teach you what the truth is. And the truth is that there is no truth. So talking about generations, it's strange the way we look at others. If uh, baby boomers look, like, look like, as uh, Gen Yers, they will say, wow, who are these aliens? Who is in that body? What are these, dress, uh, the, these clothes? And if uh, Gen Yers look at baby boomers, they will think we come, I come from the ice age, which is not exactly true. So there is something that we need to do, to, uh, to do on generations. And for a huge employer as, as we are, it's obvious. And we have to do it now. We have to do it now because the world is changing. And it's been explained this morning in the opening session very well that we are moving. And uh, the population, not only in Europe, but <laughs> everywhere in the world, is changing. That's why we have to uh, think about this question of business case also. And for a company, if we want to drive things, there is always a need for business case. And I've been asked so many times uh, to demonstrate within Selexo that there is uh, a link between diversity and inclusion and performance. P performance is, of course, the key word. We want to be nice, we want to be fair, but as a company, we need to be efficient and profitable. That is performance. And so many times, again, I've been asked, and, and I feel this question, this question is very strange, because should we demonstrate that it's better to be smart than stupid? And that's the case when people ask, tell me why we should have, for instance, more women in, the, in top management position. That's shocking. But there is something that uh, is quite well accepted. It's the fact that to drive performance, we need to have engaged people. How can you feel engaged if you are a woman, for instance, and if you look at your top management teams and there are only males? How can you feel engaged if you are gay and if uh, you hear very aggressive things about uh, uh, homosexuality? So, nobody would challenge this direct line. What we say is that diversity and inclusion, and above all inclusion, drives engagement. And when we look at our engagement figures, we measure it globally, we see that there are gaps between generations. To make it very short, the older you are, the more engaged you are. It's, I think, quite normal because our companies, at least our company, has been created in the 60s, and we probably have management styles, behaviors, that were very relevant in the 70s, 80s, 90s. Probably there is something to think about 
for the other, uh, other generations. And one of the first things we need to do is to address this famous question of stereotypes. Do you think you have stereotypes, by the way? Yes? No, not that, yes, a bit. I would like to share with you some cartoons to illustrate stereotypes on age. Uh, starting with this one, I hope you can read it. So, I was born when I was a kid, actually. I was so proud to have my first hi-fi device. It was so modern. I even, I'm even struggling now to explain that to my son. Can you read? And before you ask, no, the defibrillator is not yet available as an iPhone app, which is a shame. I would love to have it. It would be so safe. <laughs> and for the last, the last one is not a, a cartoon, it's a picture. Uh, let me try, okay. This is a picture of my son. It's very nice, yeah? We have the same, same smiles, take, take out my beard, and we are the same. So he's 16 years old. He was born in 98 when France won the World Cup. Uh, so this is a really nice face. This is one side of, uh, of my son. This is the other side. <laughs> this cartoon is, is really global. When I use it with uh, people from Asia, from South America, from everywhere, they all say how <laughs> that we get it immediately. This is uh, uh, the uh, picture that we have, the stereotype that we have about Gen, uh, Gen Y. Actually, they, they changed my son. You cannot see the, the, the Y because you have the boxer and uh, other, some other things. So, starting working on, uh, on generations, we thought we needed to explain to our managers why we need to do so, the famous business case. And we prefer to do it with a short video than using a long deck. I will share this two-minute video that is a no-made video, that is the new world, as I have no budget to, uh, to create a, a very expensive video. I did it on Movie Maker. Good, uh, good uh, tip to, uh, to share. Hope you will like it. I even did the, the music and played the music. Hope you will like it.
this topic of generation came as a request from our CEO in Europe and from our HOD in Europe saying, we feel that there is something happening. We don't know exactly what. We have been focusing so far on uh, uh, people aged 50 plus or 55 plus, but we have this feeling that something uh, is changing that, and, and we need to address it. So we built a, a, a European working group, as usual for uh, big companies. We, we took uh, 10 people from 10 different countries. And I can tell you that managing uh, such a, a team is not that easy. We did it virtually. People from different origins, uh, uh, HR or operations, and said, what can we do? Uh, what can we do to prepare the future? Knowing that there are two goals that we need to comply with, First one is do not reinvent the wheel. There is probably some good uh, um, ex things externally that, or internally, by the way, so look at that. So it's uh, about benchmarking. And the second thing is we do not have any budget for that or very few amount of money. So can you imagine solutions that are easily doable, easily cascadable in each country, adaptable, so we can uh, move forward on this topic of generation. So we draw a nice road, and uh, we realize very rapidly that all the way along, we need to develop a culture of flexibility. You may have heard that the Gen Y, they want, to work, they want flexibility. But they are not the only ones who want flexibility. Everyone wants to flexibility. I'm a boomer, I want flexibility. Perhaps not for the same reasons but it's exactly the same types of, uh, uh, of uh, policies, of uh, action that you need to put in place. And then on the road we had, and I don't want to read all, all of these, we uh, put some actions, some uh, tools that we could create, take, or develop. Uh, and I will come uh, on some of them in, in the coming minutes. Uh, and it's, to make it very concrete, we had uh, uh, the first thing which was the coalition campaign that includes plus uh, continue to gather best practices because we are also specialists in ignoring what is happening next door. So uh, as a global company, we may have a, a lot of good practices elsewhere and we are not aware of them. So I would like to focus on the uh, first thing which is raising awareness. One of the first or the biggest uh, reason for troubles is ignorance. And we think we know that we need to raise awareness on this topic, as on all of the university topics. And a few years ago, we started with a tool that, we call, that is called iGen. It's an e-learning that we, uh, each manager has an access to. And uh, it's in several languages. It's a 90-minute one for a big long. And the aim of this, uh, of this uh, e-learning is to introduce the four generations, to show their differences and their similarities. And you know what? We always see the differences, not that much the similarities, but similarities are very, very uh, important and, uh, uh, and uh, it's uh, really not uh, well seen by people. So this is uh, something that is quite global. We adapt it by country, we take it, we put it in a language, in the local language, but it's only available for managers. Managers represent with more than 10% of our employee workforce. So 50,000 people in the country, which is already good. But we knew that we had to do more. And actually, uh, this year, when I say this year, one month ago, here in the UK, uh, our teams have developed and launched uh, a game. We had a session on gamification. Uh, a game for our full-time employees. So there's 370,000 people in the world they work for us, they work for you as clients, and they don't have a so and so email address, so they cannot have access to our uh, e learning uh, center. And this is a, a very simple thing. I can do it. Uh, so it's a certain, something that will help the manager with his team or her team to engage in the, the dialogue. And it will be about introducing the generations again and then to discuss about some characteristics of each generation and put them on the right generation and have this discussion that is first big picture and then, so what's about us? We are a team of uh, 10, you were born in the 60s, I was born in the uh, 80s. I 
realize that something uh, um, uh, explains why we are sometimes uh, uh, missing those candidates. So this is a very simple thing. It's, it, and I'm very happy that because it says it, it lasts 20 minutes. I've heard that usually that 20, 12 or 20 minutes is the maximum uh, 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 length for, for uh, uh, concentration. So that's uh, really uh, uh, perfectly on purpose. So these two tools allow us in the coming months, years, years, I guess, to train, to raise awareness uh, for all of our workforce, so the 430,000 people. We'll do it progressively, we'll have to adapt it, because there are maybe some characteristics that are too close to the local culture. For instance, with Asia, there are things they do not resonate. I had some bad experiences around, around the World War II. That's not a, a point of reference uh, the same way that it is for us. Second thing is about connecting people. Uh, which is uh, absolutely critical. So we knew it, uh, we knew it from uh, other topics, and we have actually developed um, networks, employee networks, and we have two models. One is about intergenerational networks. And it's the case in uh, North America, uh, USA, and Canada, and here in the UK. And another model is a Gen Y network that exists uh, in the, the Netherlands and in Belgium. We are happy to have the two models because we don't know what the perfect solution, the perfect answer is. It has to fit with the expectations locally. The Young Sodexo initiative came from young people from in the Netherlands. They said, we love this company, but we want to have our voice. We want to be connected with, uh, with uh, the CEO, with the board. We want to, uh, to participate to the uh, development of, uh, of the company. So, uh, they came and said, uh, can you give us some money? We'll uh, put that together. We'll also break the silos within the company and we'll support the development of the company. We'll see in the future how this will evolve, but I think there is a space for both models. Uh, and it's something similar we had on gender, for instance. We had women networks and they became, or oh, they're still, uh, uh, um, becoming gender networks to make it more inclusive, so they can include men. So, mm -hmm. last uh, thing is uh, how can we better welcome people and help them to, to, to grow? Um, we know from our engagement survey that the first months in the company are critical. If you are well welcome, if you feel well very rapidly, you're more uh, uh, likely to, to, to stay and to, uh, to grow within this, uh, the company. So what we saw from other companies is uh, some uh, two things. One is the buddy program. When you join Sodexo, you have your boss. He or she will explain you what you have to do, what your responsibilities are, but you'll have also, also a buddy, and he or she will be the person that will help you to <coughs> navigate within the company, understand the culture, the dress code, whatever. And that's a quite informal program, but with, uh, uh, with um, uh, clear uh, borders. And the second one is reciprocal mentoring. We saw some good practices regarding reverse mentoring and thought that's really something we can take and uh, adapt. And driving uh, this agenda, we thought also uh, that uh, uh, the experience we had on mentoring, especially on gender, was very clear that it is always a double uh, double benefit action. So we decided to make it reciprocal to also facilitate it to make it easier to accept for some people, saying uh, I don't need to be mentored by, uh, by this young guy. So you will get and you will give. This is, uh, these two, two actions are actually um, piloted in uh, some European countries. So this uh, agenda, this roadmap that I showed uh, a couple of minutes ago. We are in the middle of, uh, of, of this journey, so far from the end, but the objective for us is to look at the outcomes of the results. And the best way to do it will be to, uh, measure, uh, to look at the, our engagement survey in two years. We just had the, the latest one this year, so we've seen the gaps, and they were quite similar to those we had uh, two years ago. We'll see in two years how we have been progressed. Because what we know is when we, are, when we act on diversity and inclusion, we get results. For instance, this year we got a 
uh, higher score on diversity and inclusion globally than two years ago. So the money we put on the table has an impact. So that's where we are, to, uh, where, where, where we are now. And uh, in two years, we'll know if uh, these uh, actions, plus some others that I had no time to cover today, will uh, have an impact on engagement of our workforce. Thank you very much. Thank you. So, can I take some questions? Massimo, I'll come back to you in a second. Okay, either way, but yes, please, Massimo. Thank you. Um, can you explain uh, to me a bit more what is the, the, the business uh, um, requirement by which you need to increase your generation of inclusion? So what was, the, was there any kind of, of business-related need that, uh, that uh, you have identified? Yeah, of course, it, it's, it's a clear one. I, I mentioned that we have 75 million people that use our services <laughs> each day. And uh, similar to what uh, we've, you've seen in the video, saying that 50% uh, of our workforce will be Gen Ys in uh, five years, six years, 2020. Uh, they will uh, represent also, perhaps not 50% of our consumers, but not far. If we don't take that into consideration, we will never succeed. So there is clearly a, a, an impact on that. Also, we have clients, and clients are companies, they are organizations, they are hospitals, they are, and they all face the same issues. And the good thing is uh, we see also diversity and inclusion as the perfect way to improve uh, the quality of life within uh, our company, but also to offer that to clients and to make the difference. So if we can differentiate ourselves by taking these, uh, uh, these uh, topics into consideration and also uh, supporting our clients in their journey, connecting us, um, that's what they really want to do, that will give us a business uh, advantage. And there are many, many other reasons also, but the business case is, of course, uh, very important. Also, something very important, as the, the population is getting older, which is good news for all of us. We have in our quality of life services, elder care services, which is a growing part. Um, it's still a, a startup within Sodexo, but I'm sure that in 10 years, it will represent a big part of our business and will open new markets. For instance, uh, Japan, uh, I don't mm. know if uh, uh, we'll, we'll be in Japan in, uh, in the coming years, but the population is, uh, uh, is, very, is older and older, decreasing, there are challenges. J just to pick up on that, um, do you measure the service profit chain at Sodexo, have you? Because, as you say, engagement equals performance, mm -hmm. but that's good in general terms, but it would be interesting to find out whether the lower engagement you currently have in Gen Y is actually having an impact on service. Not yet. Not yet, okay. Not yet. The, the, this is a good idea, by the way, to, 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 uh, to look at both sides, positive and, uh, and uh, negative. Um, I think even the, if the, uh, the level of engagement is, is lower, it's not really bad, and it depends uh, on the country. So th these sure. are uh, average uh, figures I showed uh, uh, um, across Europe, mm. but from one country to another, it's, uh, it, it's, uh, there are big differences, and they are very linked to the management. Yes. Not, to the, not only to the culture, to the country, very linked sure. to, 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 to the management. So. Yeah. Okay. Um, okay. I'd love to measure that too. Right. Well, I'll put the word out. You'll have 20 suppliers chasing you by the end of the day. <laughs> Sorry. There we are. Hi. I just wondered whether there's been any resistance to discussing those sort of things within your organization. Are your employees quite comfortable to discuss the generation that they're in and when they're playing that generation match game? I just wondered whether there's been any resistance. I'm not sure I got your question. Do you mean, are we able, do, do we accept to share what we do? Are, are people a bit shy and resistant to being identified as a particular generation with maybe stereotypes attached to it? Are they quite to open it? to discuss yeah. it? Is it? Are they comfortable to discuss oh, it yes. within your organization? And the, the, this is not a topic that uh, people hide. When I work on, uh, on disability, when I work on sexual orientation, mm. uh, it's, it's really Different. tricky to yeah. have people disclosing it. But saying, you know, I'm a Gen Y, I'm a baby boomer or whatever, 
you know, even if it creates sometimes some uh, needs for justification. For instance, I'm very often uh, uh, saying that uh, I'm a Gen Y by age, but I'm, I'm at the end of the Gen Y, so uh, uh, I'm close to the Gen X. Uh, and I'm always saying that because for, perhaps I don't want to be identified as a baby boomer. But actually, <laughs> actually, yes. when I look at, uh, uh, at me, there are some things in me that, that are clearly uh, baby boomers or Gen X, for instance, my music, uh, the music I've been listening to. But if I refer to technology, I'm more a Gen Y. Hmm. And I think each of us is a complex person. So hmm. we, we are not... Uh, only um, uh, somebody born in that year, and that's who you are, of course. So I, I don't see any resistance on this topic. And on the contrary, it helps to put words of, on things that you don't understand. Mm. Yeah. Could I t thank you. Could I just take one last question? And we have a time for a quick answer, if that's OK. Thank you. Um, hi. So I've got two things. One, could I see your game? I would love to have a look. Is it actually in the box? And um, <laughs> my, my second question is, I'm a Generation Y, um, but I'm probably the early years of Generation Y, and there are some people coming into our organisa organisation now that, you know, the 16, 17, 18-year-olds. Um, I'm an HR business partner, and I see how different they behave in what they do and how they do it compared to mm. my early years of that generation. And, and I almost feel like Generation Y is quite clearly split from different work ethics. Mm. How do you handle that? Because they, they are in the same generation, but actually their behavior, their culture, you know, you used your phone earlier to, to show your son getting some of these people off of their phone is, is very difficult. So <laughs> what, what have you done to help That's engage so in that, to, to, to turn that around? Because I agree with you, they are the future of a company. They are what you need mm. going forward, but that connection can be quite difficult. So is there mm. any hints and tips that you've got that you've learned from, from the generation game that you've done? Uh, I think the, the Gen Y is similar to the others in that aspect. Um, just say that I'm, I'm a baby boomer, I was born in 61. Uh, I'm not from the same generation that people, they were uh, late, born in the uh, late 40s, for instance. Mm. So there are different things about that. So I, I think we cannot cut each ger generation by uh, um, groups. Precisely, yeah. Um, and what we want to do is first uh, to raise awareness and to engage in dialogue. This is down to change behaviors. Because what we are looking for is changing behaviors. And by the way, we have defined something that is called the 15 golden behaviors for inclusive managers. It's, it's uh, done in, in that purpose. So we cannot cut uh, the, uh, the, the uh, age category, but we can cross things with the uh, DNA dimensions, for instance. I think there are different challenges for uh, young women and uh, young men sometimes. There are different challenges for uh, women, baby boomers, and uh, female baby boomers, and, and male baby boomers. So I cannot say we will have uh, something dedicated to the first part of the Gen Y and to the uh, oldest part. We just want to engage the dialogue, make, it, make uh, things visible yeah. on the table, and have the dialogue at the very concrete level. Who are you? What is something, uh, what has uh, helped you to be who you are? Or what has uh, been the barrier for your personal development? And that's, um, I think, the only thing we can uh, uh, imagine to improve the communication, the engagement of the other team and as an individual. So. So still no final answer for getting the 13-year-old daughter off her phone, but still. <laughs> John, thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you.